Right, it's three o'clock, so let's kick off. Great. Hi, and welcome. I'm really excited to be here talking today about progressive web applications, what they are and how they are different and in our opinion better than mobile apps. My name is Nazish and I work for Morsi's Club, one of the largest home credit providers in the UK. We offer small cash loans between 100 and £1,500 direct to customers' doorsteps via a network of agents across the UK. I'm Imran, a UX designer at Ascensor. We're a full service digital agency based in Leeds, specializing in website design and marketing. Uh, we've worked very closely with Moses Club to develop a fully compliant loan application app. This means that customers have full understanding of the loan agreement and can provide consent to the, to the terms of the loan before disbursement. So we're going to begin by going into a little detail around progressive web apps and what they are, uh, followed by our top eight reasons to use a PWA. Uh, we'll also touch on some of the challenges we faced um, at Ascensor for building the PWA, and then the next steps for the Moses Club app. Um, during the talk, feel free to ask any questions throughout and we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. So what is a PWA? A progressive web application, or a PWA for short, takes advantage of all the latest technologies to combine the best of web and mobile apps. Think of it like a website built with an app-like interface with a single code base that can be used across all devices and operating systems. So security is paramount and that's why there's always that's why PWAs are always served by HTTPS. This means basically that the data is secure in transit. Uh, so we can we can see here uh, examples of other established brands, uh, global household uh, names using PWAs, albeit some of them also have native alternatives. Um, over time, as browsers adopt more features, PWAs by their very nature uh, are progressive, progressively enhanced. Uh, they also integrate into the phone system settings. So this kind of blurs the lines between uh, native apps and PWAs as PWAs start getting more access to things like file system, address book, camera, um, and the limitations of PWAs are pretty much just set by the browsers and what permissions the browsers actually grant. Uh, for the most part, the permissions are growing though, but there are a few instances where features are introduced but then retract. Uh, one example of a feature might be uh, the ability to get the status of the battery on the device. Uh, this allowed websites to get how to get the information of how much of a battery was remaining. Uh, but this is now being re retracted due to privacy concerns. So in 2017, Morse's Club had a vision and we approached a sensor to help. We wanted a digital solution that will allow our customers to manage their loans and make prepayments all online. We decided to test pilot this in a small region with an MVP solution which could be rolled out quickly. So a centre proposed PWAs as an alternative to mobile apps um, as the most efficient way to securely and effectively deploy an MVP solution to the single region that Morse's Club wanted to roll out to. Uh, this method allowed for an iterative approach to enhancing the app's features based on consumer research. Um, the pilot worked really well and we rolled out to all regions from February 2019 and the graph shows the number of registrations over time. Towards the end of the year, we increased our awareness of the app through the agents and additional marketing material. And in March this year, we, we saw another spike and that's COVID um, and lockdown. And due to this, agents were unable to visit customers in their homes. So therefore, they had to register for the Morse's Club app to continue making repayments online. As of today, we have over 50% of our customers registered on the app. Overall, you can see how this solution has helped Morse's Club accelerate their growth in the last year and undergo a digital, health, digital transformation process from a traditional face-to-face -face doorstep lending business model to a more customer-centric, multi-channel approach. 
So we're now going to do a bit of a deep dive into our top eight reasons for why we think PWAs are great and have the advantage over mobile apps. It's, it's important to understand that the PWAs are great in the instance of what we have created for Moses Club here. So point number one, look and feel. From a user point of view, PWAs look and feel like a mobile app, no matter what mobile phone or operating system you are using. They are reliable, fast and engaging. And from a user point of view, it's difficult to tell the difference between a mobile app and a PWA. So this provides a really good customer experience, improved user retention and performance. So at a sense of find that companies that offer apps generally already have a website, uh, being able to use their existing website to engineer the UI whilst maintaining uh, an already established design language speeds up the development and design process exponentially. Um, so without having to reinvent the user interface for separate operating systems, we're able to allocate a lot more resources into enhancing the user experience and functionality versus just aesthetics. So for example, when Twitter launched the PWA Lite, a Twitter Lite, they saw an uplift in 65% page views per session and a reduction in 20% in bounce rates. And on Morse's Club, we found that customers who registered for the app uh, were, likely to they were twice as likely to renew their loan compared to customers who haven't registered. So point number two is add to home screen. So PWAs can be instantly accessed and downloaded through the web for free instead of forcing users to pay for the app and download it via app stores. So how this works is that users visit the Moses Club website through their web browser as normal, so for example, Safari, and simply add it to the home, sc uh, home screen as a shortcut. So it sits along with other mobile apps on their home screen, making it easy to access. So on, on Android, here is an example in Chrome displaying the prompt to customers. So customers actually get a little notification at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so when they open the app from the home screen, they will get a splash screen without the address bar. And we therefore display the branding for Moses Club. Um, uh, it's also possible to distribute this, this exact same PWA into the Google Play Store. Advantages of this is being able to, uh, well, one of the notable, notable advantages being able to communicate with other devices such as you know, watches running Wear OS. So point number three, single development stream. PWAs are cost effective as there's only a single development stream. You don't need time and budgets and mobile developers for separate iOS and Android versions. We're able to use existing web technologies such as HTML and CSS, as well as as a tech stacks for distribution. Uh, with that being said, there are instances where we will alter the UX or the UI depending on the OS. However, this isn't really necessary and the single design and development will definitely perform. So with the Moses Club app, this allowed us to be agile and respond quickly to changes. This could be changes in financial regulation, uh, regulations. So for example, the FCA stipulates that agents are not able to ask customers directly whether they would like to apply for additional loans. So the Moses Club app allows customers to express interest and this gets logged and the agent gets a notification so they can follow up with the customer and complete the loan. Also, due to COVID and lockdown earlier this year, many doorstep lending companies, including Morse's Club, were impacted, impacted as agents were not able to visit customers in their homes, uh, collect their repayments and issue new cash loans. Through quick development, we updated the Morse's Club app to offer remote lending so agents didn't have to visit customers in person. So point number four, faster release. Related to the previous point, but especially relevant for Morse's Club, is the faster app development and release times. When making changes to the app, we don't rely on Apple and Google approval before making this available to customers, um, and, and neither are you tied down to their guidelines. So here we can see a little screenshot in the uh, laptop 
the, the amount of guidelines required uh, PDF documentation just before you submit an application. Um, often on our own mobile phones, unless we've got it set to auto update, we don't generally update our mobile apps. Some apps pre prevent usage unless you actually update the app uh, so they become unusable. With PWA, PWAs, however, users will access the latest version the next time they use the app and see the new and improved features without the need for manually updating them. Um, these releases can be deployed at the click of a button by the development team at a sensor. For financial service companies, this is crucial when responding to regulatory changes. And at Morse's Club, the PWA allows us to make changes frequently and easily to be compliant. So step number five, push notifications. We all know the importance of push notifications. Research, research suggests that push notifications will achieve up to three times more retention than apps without notifications. So that's good news for progressive web apps. They can send out push notifications in the same way mobile apps can. Your PWA notifications can now sit up there with the rest of the notifications in the status bar from the likes of like Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Again, another example of blurring the lines between native apps versus PWAs. Uh, for Morses Club, we are quite restricted in terms of what we can put on push notifications from a regulatory point of view. Uh, but examples of this could be things like your payment is due appearing as a notification. So point number five, point number six is offline access. So the good thing is PWAs can work offline when there is no internet connection or Wi-Fi. And the way we've implemented this for Morses Club is when a user accesses the app, um, it will cache an online version of the page onto their device. It is very lightweight and this caching is done by the use of what is known as a service worker. The service worker is a programmatic method of caching resources. Point number seven is minimal storage. Since it requires no download, PWAs will take up less memory on your phone, which is a big plus point for PWAs. Especially when on some phones, purchasing additional storage can cost a lot more. In comparison, storage and size concerns are out of scope for most mobile app development teams. For example, the LinkedIn app on Android it takes up 68 megabytes of storage on Android and on iOS, that's 219 megabytes. And on my phone, it's using nearly 690 megabytes. So this includes the size of the app plus additional device caching. So that's a lot of memory. Yeah, so with PWAs, um, you don't have to take that into consideration when buying your next device. Uh, storage isn't an issue. So different browsers will allow PWAs to use different amounts of storage. For example, Chrome allows 60% of the available disk space, whereas Firefox allows 50%. So I guess there is a bit of inconsistency, inconsistency there. However, we're able to check uh, the amount of available space on a device before our apps are installed. However, we do build our apps to be lightweight and not invade the customer disk space. So the last point is more for marketeers than customers, and that is that PWAs can help with SEO. Because PWAs are websites and web pages, they can be crawled and indexed um, by Google compared to mobile apps, which can't. And so for, more, for the Morses Club app, because the accounts are user specific and contain personal data, SEO optimization isn't really relevant for us. But for e-commerce sites and other stores, PWAs could help with SEO if the page is adequately optimised. But this also means that you can link PWAs to your existing Google Analytics account. So there's no need to accrue additional cost here or to learn other third party mobile app analytic tools uh, such as Mixpanel, uh, iOS Analytics, Firebase, which is a Google product. However, it does have limited functionality. Uh, so that's what we've done on the Morses Club um, to, uh, side. We, with the Morses Club Progressive Web App, we've got a new app view set up in Google Analytics, and we've also installed hot jar tracking and surveys. And this helps us to monitor performance of the PWA and identify areas of improvement.
So having access to analytical tools and listening to customer feedback, it helps us to react and optimise our strategy. So for example, on Morse's Club, our customers are not particularly digitally savvy or they're familiar with PWAs and they expect to download the Morse's Club app from the App Store. To help overcome this, we produced additional video guides and how-to blogs and trained our agents to help customers with registration and usage of the app. So in terms of the challenges that Ascensa faced, it was more around the PWA talking to internal legacy systems. Um, however, working closely with Morse's Club, um, this allowed us to overcome some of these challenges and bottlenecks as we progress with introducing new forward thinking tech. So the next release for the Morse's Club app is actually due to go live this week. And that is the Recommend a Friend referral app scheme. So we run this campaign currently offline. So what happens is that a customer shares a leaflet with their family and friends, and in return, they get a 30 pounds gift voucher when the loan is approved. So due to COVID, we switched this to online, and now this can be done by the Morse's Club app uh, through the use of a web share API. There are also other features such as biometric web authentication. So this would allow for things like uh, using the fingerprint sensor for customers to log into their app. Uh, also for new customers who aren't currently registered, the ability to use one-time passwords to improve security of PWAs. Um, and there's also new functionality as well, which allows when sending an SMS for one-time passcodes, we can automatically detect the code and insert it into the uh, PWA, much like native applications. Um, and there are some other um, APIs also being developed that kind of mimic what is available on native applications as well. That we're really excited at Ascensa to be implementing for Morse's Club um, and other PWAs that we're working on. Uh, but primarily, any type of new feature that we do implement is around improving the user experience of the actual customer who's using the app. Thank you so much for listening. If you're currently working on mobile apps, we hope this webinar has given you more of an insight in how progressive web applications work and how they are an alternative to mobile apps. Great, so um, we've got a few more minutes left of this presentation. Uh, so if you've got any other further questions, uh, leave us some comments. Uh, I think Naz, we do have a few questions here. Um, yep. If you can read them out. So I've got an e-commerce store, should it be a PWA? Uh, that's, a, that's a really good question. I guess it depends. Uh, we probably need to look at, um, you probably want to look at the analytics first and see, are you actually getting new customers as your majority of the traffic or uh, have you got a lot of returning customers? If you've got a lot of returning customers, I would recommend potentially going down the PWA route uh, potentially even deploying it to the Play Store. If a majority of your customers are new, then I guess they're probably not going to be inclined to install the app to their home screen and use it in that manner. I hope that answers the question. Uh, yep, uh, there's another question. Uh, when we were sort of discussing this earlier, can you add PWAs to app stores? And if not, how would you access address discoverability? Uh, I think that's I think that's something you've also uh, experienced, hasn't yeah. it? Yes. Yeah, so, so although you can add PWS to App Store, uh, we've decided not to go down this route. It's just that uh, the reason for this is that uh, recently the registration process is slightly different. So that um, as part of that, you become registered for the app. So it's not something you do post launch as much. Um, but, but we've seen that you can add PWAs to App Store. Um, Great. Uh, we've got a few more questions here as well. Um, so can customers download the PWA from Play Store, App Store, or can they only use a link from the Morse's Club website? Um, so to deploy the app to the Play Store, it's, uh, it's technically a TWA. Um, they can download the PWA from the Play Store once it has been deployed. It can also be added to other stores. Uh, there's a bit more uh, red tape to kind of go through, but the Play Store, which is owned by Google, is uh, a lot more easy to get into. Uh, 
but again, so you can also, so, or can they only use a link from the Moses Club website? Yeah, so they can do both. So they can, they can link, they can use a link from the Moses Club website or they can download it from the PWA store. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Uh, if not, just give me, give me a shout and I'll try to answer it in more detail. Uh, we've got a few more here. In your opinion, when would a native app be better than a PWA? Okay. Um, so I think a native app would be better than a PWA where you need to use uh, something with a lot more native integration to the, de to the device. So for example, there are still some things missing from PWAs that are only available in native applications. So for example, things like um, further biometrics. So uh, some, some native applications will use uh, liveness checking or depths for the camera for onboarding customers and, and the security aspect of that. We can't get that in a PWA. Um, other times using a lot more of the hardware. So for example, things like gaming, uh, you will need to use the device hardware to really kind of get the best performance. Uh, whereas with the PWA, you're kind of limited to whatever the, the browser application can pull. So again, I hope that answers the question. Uh, um, there's a good one actually from, um, from one of the participants. What are the best applications to use when designing for PWAs? something you can answer what are, the applications yeah. what, what are the best what are the best applications for designing for pwas the best application that we find when designing for pwas is uh action uh, and the reason for that is because we're able to um, build the website or oh, sorry the app even and the website um to the point where we can actually test it on a mobile device. Um, so they are other programs that a lot of designers like to use, things like uh, XD or Figma or Sketch, but you won't get the actual front end experience. So for example, when you're clicking on fields or drop downs, uh, you don't get that native experience. So when it comes to actually using the best tool to design, that is the best one that I would recommend. Also uh, something we probably haven't touched on very much, but the difference, one of the differences with the PWA for Masters Club is it has got a desktop element to it as well. So whereas you do save time with a single development stream on Masters Club, you've got the mobile app side of things, but then it's also visible in desktop. Uh, so we do have to design desktop and mobile and everything in between as well. Uh, and we, we can see traffic of customers using desktop. So in, in actually it lets you do desktop design, tablet design and mobile design, but it's all interactive, like a real device, a real developed version of the app. Okay, we've got a few more questions coming in here now as well. Uh, is a PWA the same as a hybrid app or are there subtle differences? I would say, it's not really the same as a hybrid app because there's a hybrid app. So you're probably familiar with things like PhoneGap or, uh, or other, other frameworks like that to create hybrid apps. Whereas you know, with uh, a PWA, we're, we're using just the web technology in terms of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Whereas I think, um, and you can do that in some of the other frameworks for building hybrid apps. However, uh, I think some of the hybrid apps do hook into some of the native APIs by default, whereas I think um, the PWA is not so much. Uh, it, I, I, would, I would argue that you can actually do a little bit more in hybrid apps, but uh, the frameworks for that are constantly ever-changing, whereas the, at least with PWAs, the browsers are all on the same page in terms of functionality features. Yeah. I've uh, got a question. How important was the PWA in helping Morsi's Club get through the restrictions imposed through lockdown? So as, as I mentioned, um, the fact that you could um, constantly make tweaks and push, push out the changes uh, automatically uh, to the app. So the next time the customer logs in, they will see the newest versions. So they don't have to manually go to um, the app store and make the download. So that enabled us to um, to kind of be quite reactive and be um, be quite quick. Um, and in terms of um, 
sort of the growth as you can see on the t in the, um, in the sort of t um, the chart where it was showing um, in in March there was a massive spike. So obviously initially we only had um, customers that were quite tech savvy and were, were happy and comfortable with uh, with using the mobile app to pay um, weekly. Um, whereas the more traditional sort of uh, old fashioned sort of customers that were preferred paying in cash to their agents, it, it was kind of um, they were preferred doing that through agents. So I guess when it came to lockdown, there was no choice for the customers but to pay either through the phone, which um, we had sort of, you know, uh, it was extremely busy time. So, uh, you know, the app was probably um, more easier for customers once they've kind of, um, you know, got used to got used to how to work with it and download it to their home screen. It, it's, you know, really straightforward and much easier. So I think it... Um, I think it was just because we'd already launched it and it, all the systems were in place, the marketing material was there, um, and then any further ch changes were pushed out automatically. It helped us kind of stay on top of all the things that were going on during lockdown uh, period. Great, <laughs> um, Another one here. Um, did you have any issues with cross browser compatibility. For example, isn't Safari on iOS more limited with permissions like storage? It's a great question. Uh, and the developers did actually have quite a few issues with cross browser compatibility. However, we did have to put a few fallbacks in um, where things like the home screen pop-up will pop up, pop up uh, on, on, on iPhones and things like that. Uh, but on, on the flip side, I would also say that the the compatibility of each operating system, for example, iOS and Android, they also have a version. So, you know, you may be now on iOS 14, but your app, uh, your new app only supports iOS 14, but nothing below that. So do you build the app to have backwards compatibility um, or do you build the PWA to support the browser version? And, and so there are pros and cons um, of each one. There will always be browser compatibility issues, even just from a, a box standard from end development perspective. As soon as you add in the aspect of PWAs and things like what kind of APIs are accessible on each um, operating system, there will be compatibility issues. Um, one recent one that Naz was just bringing up earlier regarding the uh, recommender friend. So the web share API, so there is compatibility issues on Safari for that. But the fallback for that is we would just uh, where we can't use the web share API, there's a, we, we've offered a, a different link. Um, uh, whereas on Android, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot more functionality at the moment. I think Google Chrome is really pushing the boundaries of what can be done in terms of PWAs. Uh, but again, it just comes back down to the whole, uh, the pros and cons of each and what, you, what it is you're trying to build. My answer. Um... Just looking through if there's any that we haven't addressed in the questions. Yes, we've got another one here, which is, uh, is it a separate place as a title than, than a dot on a domain name, i.e. www.pwa.domainname.com? Do you want to answer that one? Um, so this is kind of reminding me of like m dot domainname.com and uh, back in the days where we had wap.domainname.com so uh, yeah so with with pwas you don't need a separate place it will still be the same domain name so for example if your website is domainname.com the pwa would still be uh, accessed from that you don't need to put it onto a subdomain or a subdirectory so i hope that answers the question Okay, I'm just looking if there's any more that we haven't answered. Um, great, if there isn't, I think that kind of wraps up um, the questions for today. Thank you so much for uh, your time and we hope it, you found it useful. If you have any further questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. Our contact details are on the uh, screen. Um, and yeah, thank you again for your time. Thank you everyone. See ya. See ya. Bye.